Let's talk about how we can find the entropy of formation for a compound being formed. Unlike enthalpy, entropy does have an absolute reference point. We saw that before, which is that the entropy equals zero at zero K for all substances. So this means all elements and all compounds. So we can calculate the entropy change that's associated with a compound forming. We should start by sort of comparing the approach, or recalling the approach rather, that we used for the enthalpy of formation. And for the enthalpy of formation, we had the following. We had the integral from T to 298 of the sum of all reactants, NCP dt, plus we had the enthalpy of formation at 298, and then we had the integral from 298 to T of the sum of all products, NCP dt. So we use this three-step process, and we can use basically a similar one to find the entropy change of formation. And when we have our reactants basically going from T to 298, we can write sort of the analogous expression for the entropy change. So this is still T to 298. We are going to sum over all reactants. And now we have N Cp divided by T dt, because this is how we calculate a change in entropy. I'm going to skip step two for the moment, and I'm going to write step three. So 298 up to T, sum over all products of N Cp over T dt. Now the question is, you know, what goes here? And I'm just going to write for now this, the entropy change at 298. So this part we can do. All we need to know is what is Cp. And this part we can do, again, all we need to know is Cp. But this middle one, this is sort of new, and the question is where do we find this? Is this something that we look up, like this was, uh, or is it something that we have to calculate? So this is this particular piece in the box is something that we have to calculate. And we can look to do that. So we are interested in the entropy of formation at 298. This little uh, superscript here is indicating that this is the absolute entropy uh, and that it's for the pure compound. And we can find this from the absolute entropies of the products and the reactants, which are tabulated. So this is the sum for the products of N times the absolute entropies at 298 minus the sum over the reactants of N times the absolute entropies at 298. So these things are what are tabulated. And so we can look those up and we can use them for any uh, formation reaction to calculate this. Now, we might be interested in doing this at a different temperature, though, because you'll notice that this is only for 298, and there are actually two different approaches that we can use to find this at another temperature. So the first way that we could do that is by using the absolute entropy data because not only is this tabulated at 298, but some data sources also have it at different temperatures. So we can basically do that same expression. So delta SF at a different temperature is the sum of the products of N times the absolute entropy at the temperature of interest minus the sum for the reactants of N times the absolute entropies at the temperature of interest. The second way that we can do this is 
using the expression that the Gibbs free energy of formation is equal to the enthalpy of formation minus T times delta S of formation. And we can rearrange this to find that the entropy of formation is equal to enthalpy of formation minus the Gibbs free energy of formation divided by the T of interest. So the enthalpies of formation are usually tabulated and then Gibbs free energies of formation as a function of temperature are usually tabulated. It's only the entropy of formation that's not. So we can use these tabulated values or we can use these tabulated values. And it doesn't matter which way you do it, you should come up with the exact same value for the entropy of compound formation.